Sharp Objects proves that the days of the male anti-hero on TV are gone, and the days of the complicated women are here. I'm an unconventional girl, that's what you're talking about. HBO's new limited series, Sharp Objects, is a sharp turn away from what we were seeing in the early 2000s with shows like The Sopranos, Breaking Bad, then we had Mad Men, these imperfect men who led the show with the help of supporting female characters. We're now seeing women come to the forefront. Let me be good, okay? These complex characters are the roles women want to play and women want to watch. We're seeing The Handmaid's Tale bringing out so many different conversations. Killing Eve talking about complicated women in this detective world. We have The Sinner with Jessica Biel, who's actually the one committing the crime. We have Godless, a Western that's totally focused on women. And that's because people are really interested in hearing the stories of women and the stories of women of different ages and their experiences in our society whether it be mental health, parent-child relationships, women's rights. This trend is really seen on sharp objects. When you're here, everything you do comes back on me. Understand? Sharp Objects follows three generations of complicated women. Amy Adams' character, Camille Preaker, is an alcoholic. She's a journalist who returns home to report on a case of the death of two young girls. And that brings back a lot of vivid memories for her. Memories that aren't so great. Camille's mother, Adora, tries to keep everything perfect, prim and proper. But there's something lying on the surface that is just waiting to bubble up. Camille's half-sister, Amma, is kind of a rebellious teenager that nobody really knows is rebellious. And we're seeing this whole crime play out through their perspectives. What could happen to any of us? So the story of Sharp Objects is a whodunit, but you're also figuring out who is she? Who is our main character and what's her part in this? Mama says I need to be careful around you. Is that true? Are you dangerous? Having a character like Camille Preaker, she's likable, but she's not likable. She could be the good guy, but she could also be the bad guy. And that's really powerful because as a woman watching the show, you're seeing a woman kind of unravel, unravel in her own mind, unravel her own thoughts, her own past. And while figuring that out, you could really relate to her and her insecurities. You are always so willful. Excuse me? Never sweet. And that kind of not only is compelling TV to watch, but it makes the viewer really question things in their own life, things that they're facing in their day to day. And it doesn't have to be a crime, but just figuring out how do I fit into this world? What's my place here? And what's a difference I could make in trying to figure out the story? So what do you do? You survive. In the current climate, women's stories are reigning supreme. No longer are we seeing just ingenues or moms in the kitchen. For every Don Draper, we now have an Eve. For every Walter White, we now have the women of Big Little Lies. And that really has something to say about this world we're living in now and how people are much more aware of the experiences of women and how powerful their stories can be. It's a really exciting time for actresses and storytellers to kind of play with what's going on in the real world and, and unseat these men of power in the real world and replace them with women on screen.